All right, hi everybody. This is Andrew with our recurrent superstar guest host, Steen Lomax, who was here a few years ago. And we are doing a very special Fossil Friday about the new dinosaur behind me. Yeah, I'm serving as cameraman today. Leave our usual candy ma cameraman's out of town. And we are here to answer all your questions that you left last week and some questions that I still have about Hesper ornithoides, Mieslerai. That is how you say it, right? That is. That yeah, is so let's good. get the pronunciation right, right now. Hesper ornithoides, Mieslerai. That's correct. Hesperonithoides Mieslerai. Okay. Perfect. Now, Dean, I'm going to put you on the spot here right now. If you had to sum up the importance of this fossil in one sentence, what would that sentence be? Oh, in one be? sentence. Yeah. That is putting me on the spot. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would have to say it's a remarkable specimen because it's found in the Morrison Formation, which is globally renowned. It's been collecting fossils for over 150 years. And found this one single specimen. It's the key, only single specimen of Hesperonothoides miseri anywhere in the world. Maybe that's a couple of sentences, but that, that'll count, right? Yeah, I think that'll work. So tell us basically, what is it and why is it such a big deal? I'm gonna switch the camera around so you guys can actually see it while we're talking, except I can't seem to know how to do that. Camera issues live in field. So here, we're gonna improvise. <laughs> switch around. Here we go. Oh. That way. So, yeah, Dean, again, what makes this little guy so significant? Okay, so yeah, that's your, your 3D print of it. So here's a real specimen over this side. Get the camera over here. Yeah. All right, so what makes this so, so, so significant is the fact that not only is this the only specimen of Hesperonothoides is known from the Morrison Formation here in Wyoming, it's Wyoming's smallest dinosaur. It's a little meat-eating dinosaur. It's similar to, to I kind of see it as a little bit of a, a Velociraptor-like dinosaur. So it's, it's in the same big group called Manoraptorans, and it's more, it's not particularly closely related to Velociraptor. It's a thing called, Truod it belongs to the group called Truodontidae. And this animal is the oldest Truodontid, the oldest Paravian dinosaur, bird-like dinosaur found in North America, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty epic. And it was found alongside the largest dinosaur found in Wyoming, Jimbo the Supersaurus, which is right here at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. Well, that is something else. Now, Dean, you were one of the authors on the paper. So how does it feel to be involved with a study of a dinosaur this significant, especially at this museum? Oh, it's, it's amazing. You know, I'd seen this thing for the very first time in 2008. So I came out here as a, as a volunteer for almost four months, saw the thing. I remember speaking to one of the other co-authors, Bill Wall. Um, Bill said, you know, Dean, this is a really neat find. We're yet to describe this. And I thought, wow, really cool. It'd be amazing to work on that movie one day. And in 2015, we brought together this sort of dream team of dinosaur, <laughs> dino geeks to study dino this thing with, uh, with Jessica Lippincott, who also works here at the museum and Scott Hartman, Mickey Mortimer and Dave Lovelace. And um, we studied this thing, described it. It took three years to describe this thing. And you know, it's, it's, it gives me goosebumps even being part of this study because it's such an important discovery. All right, so we've got a couple questions right here from people who weren't able to get their questions answered during last week's press conference. So let's start with the obvious one. How long is this new dinosaur and how much did it weigh? Well, that's a good question. So in terms of length, we have estimated it's around about 90 centimeters long. So, you know, pretty small. You can imagine it's about the size of a chicken, but add, the, add a tail to the chicken, you know, and you've got, you've got that little thing. It's recognizing my face now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing this selfie style with our gimbal, so this is a little confusing. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and yeah, handle it. that while I go. ask questions. Okay. There you go. So I've yeah. got quite long arms, so there we go. Yeah, you want to see more. his face right now, not mine. <laughs> so in terms of its weight, that's something I, I didn't look at, but I imagine it wouldn't have been very heavy. If you compare this, because it's very bird-like, right? And birds, many of the small-sized birds, like the size of this thing, are very, are very light. So I don't know. It's difficult to say exactly, but probably about as heavy as a chicken, maybe a little bit heavier. Okay, so it's a tiny little chicken in that sense then. Yeah, Feathered, that's it, yeah. fluffy, and lightweight. But, but with, a, with a long tail and a, a toothy beak, All right. <laughs> toothy mouth. So here's the next one. How did the geology of the Morrison Formation preserve such a small new dinosaur? With great difficulty. <laughs> that's, that's about the best answer I could give. It's, this is the thing, as I mentioned at the beginning, you've had over 150 years, almost 200 years of people collecting dinosaur bones here, right? And most of the dinosaurs that we find here are the large sauropod dinosaurs. Lori, Hesperonothoides, is literally about as big as one of the vertebrae of one of these dinosaurs, like Diplodocus or Apatosaurus. So it's a tiny, delicate little thing. The, the fact in which this has been preserved, the, the environment must have been perfect. It must have been buried. Well, we know that it was buried pretty much where it was living. So it wasn't deported anywhere else. It wasn't pushed aside. It didn't travel very far. That's because all the bones were kept articulated. 
So whatever happened to the animal after it died, it didn't go far, it was buried almost immediately. And that's how we have a, a partially articulated skeleton. So it's just a freak of nature, but it just happened to happen so we could find it. Pretty much, as okay. is most fossils. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing anything gets fossilized at all. All right, next question. How does this animal fit into the dinosaur bird transition? Oh yeah, okay, so this dinosaur, we think, well, we're very confident would have been covered in feathers. And we know that because when we look at the big family tree of dinosaurs and where this fits in is, as a truodontid, there are other truodontids that have been found in China that are slightly older, but they, a very cool thing is that they've been preserved with feathers and even other soft tissues. So we're very confident Lori would have been covered in feathers. So where that fits in is there's a couple of ideas in terms of where the evolution of avian flights or bird flight evolved from. And what it looks like is that based on our study and our interpretations of other dinosaurs, is that flight evolved multiple times in different groups of dinosaurs. It, it wasn't one straight shot of evolution of one group of animals evolved flight and then that's where all the birds came from. So flight evolved several times in different dinosaurs, but that doesn't mean Lori could fly, right? No, definitely not. So Lori didn't have her, I say her, her or him, the, Lori's, Lori's arms weren't long enough. It didn't have the capabilities to, for a flapping flight at all. And so the feathers probably would have been used for display, for courtship, or even to, to cover up its eggs. Fantastic. So another question for you. Did this dinosaur have any competition with other animals in its environment? Oh, that's good. Okay, so in the environment, so in the Morrison Formation, there have been a bunch of different dinosaurs that have been found. But because this is a, the tiniest little theropod, and so far we haven't found anything of equal size. There have been some isolated teeth of probably another truodontid, which may have been about the same size. As far as we're aware right now, until we find the fossils to disprove it, it has its own little niche. So it'll be hunting little, little animals. So lizards, small mammals, maybe even baby dinosaurs of a certain size, insects too. So you know, I suspect it would have been quite a successful animal. That's good to say, especially since it has that cute little killing claw on its Oh yeah, toe. yeah, it's got the, yeah, exactly. The little killing claw, the sickle shaped claw on its toe. It's a feisty little thing. It's a pocket sized raptor, take it on the go. <laughs> Have any small mammals been found at the Jimbo site where Lori was found? No, as far as I'm aware, no, there, there hasn't. However, I was there literally a couple of days ago and I found the first Allosaurus tooth at the site in exactly the same layer as where, where really? Lori was found. Really, that's fantastic. Really, and one of the other interns here at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center, Alex, Alex found what might be part of a frog skull. So. You know, this is pretty, bearing in mind where this animal was living was in a, a lake environment, you know, it was like a delta type environment, a wetland environment even. So, you know, th there would have been frogs and things around here. So hopefully it's a matter of time, more discoveries out at the, the lorry site and Jimbo site. And so that's stuff. not to say that small mammals didn't live in that time and in that oh, place. Oh, absolutely not. So yeah, so small mammals have been found, but they're, they're quite rare. But, you know, without a doubt, they'll have been around there where, where lorry was living. All right, so Dean, you've been with us for, you came out here for the press conference that we had last week. Yeah. You've been here the whole week. What, what have you been up to? Here, I'll give you a break on this. I'll Thank you. Yes. Arm. I'll, I'll, I'll need relaxation there. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been digging away on the dig sites, but also with a good friend of mine who happens to be here. It's Elaine Howard, who Hi. is from Florida. And Elaine is the author of the book, Passion in the Bones. So Elaine and I, we met. Zoom in. A zoom in. Elaine and I met in 2008, but you've been coming out here since 2007, right, Elaine? I have, I have. And so we've been on the dig sites over the last couple of days, digging up a few dinosaurs. We found a few bits and pieces. A few bits and pieces, but it's always a pleasure to get out on the dig sites and see what the Wyoming Dinosaur Center's been up to and amazing bones and just helping clean up the sites and finding new bits and pieces. And it's just, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, you never know, quite know what you're going to find here. So That's right. We, we were just out this morning. It's been very hot right. outside, but we've already found a few bits, you know, a few a few pieces of rib section. There was an Allosaurus tooth though found on one of the sites yeah, as well. Yeah, little, little kid, exciting. which was yeah, really exciting. Wow, so that's that's, that's, that's neat. It. Yeah, a little kid found it. So you never know that might spark their spark their interest, spark their passion. So and the search continues. So well. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Elaine, for sharing this time with us. It's certainly tremendously exciting. Our new display for Hesper Ornithoides is at the Wyoming right Dinosaur Center, so right be there. sure to come and check that out if you get the chance. We've worked very hard on it, and we are very happy 
to finally have this dinosaur on display. So don't worry, next week we will have people here who know what they're doing with the camera equipment, so we won't be doing it quite this style, but I hope you enjoyed this all the same. So until next time, Dean Lomax, Dr. Dean Lomax, just got his PhD recently. Congratulations, Dean. Congratulations. And Thanks, Elaine Howard over here. Thank you for, the book is fantastic. I highly recommend that you read it. And as always, here's Andrew at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center keeping your Friday fossiliferous. Now let's just turn this thing off.